What is the blood bond? Hmm. It is a truly unquestionably vile thing. The blood bond is to take the very essence of a person and wring it whole in chain to enslave someone's very thoughts. Like, convince them that the thoughts and actions of their bondee are their own? In a way, son-in-law, but much worse. The blood bond is, to most, completely indistinguishable from the natural feelings of loyalty, faith, duty, and love. A blood-bonded brain would do its all to trick itself into believing that these feelings, and anything demanded of them by their regnant, are legitimate, justified, and good. It can warp a thrall's very perception of reality, changing it to a world where their regnant is the undisputed center. That is undoubtedly scary. But being blood-bonded is not a prerequisite to being a ghoul. A question with an irritating answer. It is not, but almost all ghouls who drink directly from a dormitor are immediately bound in some way by the first drink. It is often assumed to be a prerequisite because though a bond exists from the first drink, it is only after the third they are truly enthralled. But depending on how frequently they are fed and how attentive their regnant is, Ghouls can either be slavishly devoted or fiercely resentful of this situation. This all entirely assuming that they're drinking fresh vitae from the sauce, and not vitae that has sat and had the blood bonding effect go out of it. In the end, a liar is someone who has lied, a thief is someone who has stolen, a rat is someone who has talked, a liege is someone who has, for whatever fucking reason, decided to live in liege Belgium and honestly hasn't had the sense to leave yet. I mean, honestly! In short, said he. And a ghoul is someone who has drunk vampiric vitae. The qualifier is only that you have committed to it once, and the label is not necessarily a permanent one. That is all a ghoul is. Ah, right, got it, okay. Uh, uh, so this slavishly devoted part of our summation of ghouls is the result of this blood bond and not actually necessarily part of being a ghoul, yes? Yes, yes and, and no. Don't do that. Ah, son-in-law, it is me, Sir D. I am a font of inspiration and ideals. <laughs> oh, you pernicious prankster. Sorry. Well, well, let me elucidate. <clears throat> right, so, drinking blood. Have you drunk in blood? Uh, closest I've gotten to is a rare blue steak, uh, maybe wet black pudding. Oh, or when Marcus impacted me and we flew into the bus together. A blemish on your gastronomic repute! That still hurts. But good for our exposition! Your regular fellow does not drink raw blood. For the purposes of this generalization, we are excluding Boy, Dor, and the fearsome Mongol hordes of Genghis Khan. But yes, you would not drink raw blood. Especially not raw human blood. Especially not directly from some nasty dude's wrist. That's grody. Disgusting. Why ever do it? This is a call to engagement, son-in-law. Why would someone drink from the grody man's wrist? Uh, my assumption was that they were simply forced to drink. Uh, Kevin used a strange mind trick to prevent us from moving back in the Binham tunnels. In such a way, they could force their ghouls to drink their blood, and then, uh... Say no more, for you are completely wrong, son-in-law. Good, I am learning. Whilst many are forced, or even tricked into drinking it, the vampire's vitae activates something in the brain upon so much as getting close to it. Activates? concept of free will is blasted into the realm of myth as you, small lad, scared by slightly too pink chicken, suddenly guzzles down that foul corpse liquid. No, that irresistible wrist nectar with no fear, no disgust, and barely any notion of what you're doing. That is as appalling as it is worrying. And once you drink... You are good and so met with a craving that would take other drugs weeks to engender. And from there, the spiral only deepens. Uh, given that, the blood bond just kind of comes naturally for most ghouls, I take it. It does. We are both the incredibly addictive vitae in of itself, eating like no other barbiturate. Then, there is the blood bond, which materializes the more someone drinks of the same vampire's vitae. 
As I heard it from Rosalia, she drank three separate times on three different occasions, 24 something hours between each drink. After that, the bond took a complete stranglehold. And much like her, that is when a ghoul becomes their Domitor's retainer, basically. Their trusted retainer, at the least. Even if they were originally unwilling, like Rosalia was, they are now both addicted and bound to the will and vitae of the vampire, overwhelmed by an uncontrollable feeling of loyalty and desire for their heinous master. That slavish devotion to the vitae comes in two for many, or just in one. For some. The ability to mess with the brain like that, the thing that makes us, us. You can just imagine the breath of power fantasies enacted by those vampires willing to abuse it. Enslave your past bully, enslave your working staff, enslave your desired lover. That is beyond horror. Oh, oh, oh yes, but believe you me, it gets far worse. Really? Oh, goodness. But not yet! 